This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, for those of you who don't know, we have a super active Discord, and one of the cool things about our Discord is that it's got an entire support ticket system. All you gotta do is fill out a support ticket, and sooner or later, somebody will help you out. Typically, it's actually pretty fast. You'll even get developers from firmwares just stopping by to help out. Now, if there's one topic that comes up more than anything else, right now at least, it seems like it's uh, Wi-Fi cracking and figuring out why people have zero byte PCAPs. It's literally like every single day, five times a day. It's just ping, ping, ping. Where are my PCAPs? Where are my PCAPs? Where are my PCAPs? So we're gonna revisit the entire Wi-Fi password cracking system. We're gonna figure this whole thing out from top to bottom. I've got the whole thing slimmed down. It's easier, faster, simpler, and better explained so that everybody should know exactly what's going on. So put on your hacker fingerless gloves. Let's crack some hashes and figure out some Wi-Fi passwords. Let's go. All right, right up top, disclaimer. Obviously, only test devices that you own or allowed to test. Doing otherwise is extremely illegal, and yes, you can get caught. Don't be a skid. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. I feel like you're gonna do it anyway, but hey, I told you, I warned you, okay? It's on you now. I do also want to acknowledge the fact that there actually has been a kind of a misconfiguration between ESP32 Wi-Fi Marauder, that's the firmware that goes onto the Wi-Fi boards, and the companion app. So there actually has been some issues with zero PCAP files, and it hasn't been the fault of the user. I want to personally thank Just Call Me Coco and Willie from XFW. They actually went out of their way to make sure that this was fixed before the video went out. So you guys are awesome. You just great job, guys. Want to give a huge shout out to Just Call Me Coco. He is the developer of the Marauder firmware. For those of you who don't know what Marauder is, it's effectively a Wi-Fi toolkit that was created for an ESP32. Now, an ESP32 is simply a Wi-Fi and sometimes Bluetooth enabled chip. And that's what Just Call Me Coco uses on his ESP32 standalone Marauder. Also, it's what the Flipper developers use for their Wi-Fi board. Now, the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi board was originally created to basically do wireless debugging and running through troubleshooting and stuff. When Flipper came out, uh, Just Call Me Coco realized that he could run his firmware on this chip and basically created this immensely powerful Wi-Fi tool that Flipper Zero can take advantage of. Now, one of the things that makes everything a little bit more complicated as far as installing firmware onto the Wi-Fi boards is the fact that there are a lot. Like this one, which is the official Wi-Fi board. Or this one made by Just Call Me Coco. Or this one made by AWOC. Or this one also made by AWOC that I threw some GPS onto. Or this one made by Some Toms. Or even this one made by Esteban Fuente Alba called the Melvique, which has an ESP32 on the back that's capable of running Marauder. I mean, hell, even I built one right here, which is one of the first prototype boards I made. So now I know you're probably thinking, hey, where do I get boards like that? Well, that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything that has to do with PCBs. PCBWay can help you design, create, and assemble almost any PCB for almost any project. They're actually currently working on a flex PCB for me right now. It's so cool. Now, don't forget, just because they're called PCBWay doesn't mean that that's all they do. They also do 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication. On top of all that, they've also got a module store where you can pick up anything from Raspberry Pi to small TFT screens to sensors and more. That's where I got my Miniware ES15 and my Miniware TS1C. So check out PCBWay.com for a free instant quote. Thank you so much again for your continued support and let's get back at it. So yeah, with all those different boards, some of them actually have to be flashed slightly differently. Well, we're gonna go through the entire process top to bottom, we're gonna get them all working today. So first, I'm gonna do it for people using official firmware. I'm gonna show you how to use FZ Flasher to flash the Wi-Fi board and then how to get the companion app through Flipper Labs. So for this example, I'm going to use the uh, transparent flipper that I got the case printed from PCBWay. The thing came out awesome. Thanks to ZR Kraken for making the model. Uh, so let's plug this into USB, hop on to QFlipper, get it all updated, and we'll show you how it works. 
All right, here we are on the desktop. Of course, we're gonna plug our flipper into USB-C. We're gonna make sure that the cable that we're using to plug it into USB-C also has data, not just power. If you're concerned about the cable, just use the one that came with the flipper. So usually we would just open up QFlipper and update that way, but I'm actually gonna show you how to use lab.flipper.net to update the firmware and also install the Marauder Companion app. So we'll close this. We're gonna navigate over to lab.flipper.net. There we go, put it on the actual screen. And here we go, we can go to the development. I mean, you can do anything you want. Um, let's do release for now and just click install. It's gonna take a few minutes, but it's gonna install and update everything and you'll be ready to go for the next step. Two very boring minutes later. All right, one short rest later and we're done here. And let's see if we can get this back up on the screen. Might have to unplug the flipper and plug it back in for lab to connect. And here we go, all updated and ready to go. Now all we have to do is go over to the apps over here, and then you can see all the cool apps that you can install directly from your browser. This is an actually a fantastic addition to the lab.flipper.net setup. I learned about this a little bit later than I should have, but man, this is a great, great setup. Obviously feel free to browse through all these and install as many apps as you'd like, but for today, we're gonna do Marauder. Search. Okay, so what's actually going on is the fact that, remember I talked about that misconfiguration between the firmware for the board and the companion app? Well, what's going on is that the app itself hasn't been updated quite yet. Not a problem, by the time this video airs, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be up, won't be an issue for you whatsoever. So you'll just be able to install Marauder, just like, well say, I don't know, cross remote, so you just click install and it'll install directly to the flipper. It's that simple, it's that easy. So for now, we're just not gonna worry about it. We can close out of labs. And then there's our update. What we're going to do from there is actually go to fzflasher.com. This is how we're going to flash our Wi-Fi board. So the first thing we'll do is actually click on how to because there's a driver that we need from Silicon Labs. So if we click in here, uh, just go to the Universal Windows driver. If you're on Windows, if you're using Mac, use Mac, whatever. Uh, we'll download that. There we go. And we'll open that. All you got to do is extract it. Make sure you extract the files. If you try to do this inside the compressed folder, it won't work. Go to the syllabister inf and go to install, open and install. Operation is successful. So that's going to install the drivers for our Wi-Fi board. So we can go ahead and close this and delete those files. We no longer need those. And if we go back and it just talks about how you're gonna plug the board in and how you're gonna use the buttons. I will show you exactly how to use the buttons in just one second. So let's switch over to the camera and I'll show you. All right, so here we have the official Wi-Fi board. You'll notice there's two buttons. It says one's boot and one's reset. It's actually written on the board itself. We're gonna hold the boot button. We're holding the boot button and then we're gonna plug in our USB-C right there. Boom, and that's it. Let go of the boot button. And then this is in what's called DFU mode, which allows the firmware to be flashed. Let's go back to desktop and do that. Now, quick note, you do not have to do this on all boards and some boards don't even have the boot or reset buttons. The flasher itself can automatically trigger things to go into boot mode, but it just depends on the wiring of the boards and when they were made and things like that. But for the most part, follow these instructions, everything will go well. We can close the how to, and all we're gonna do is click connect right there, and I have two things in there, and my USB serial at COM17 is actually a IPS clock, but it figured out ASP32, actually, let me unplug my clock just to make sure I have, uh, okay, perfect. I have overwritten the firmware of my IPS Nixie clock like five times, I don't wanna do it again, and connect. Give it a second, and here we go. Now, what's really cool is it actually allows you to select your board. So there are a ton of different boards and this is where people are getting really, really confused. Oh my God, they even have my board, which nobody actually has. Yeah, custom unreleased, that's so cool. You guys are the best. This was made by Zardos and Infosec Red. All right, so let's scroll back up and this is the official Wi-Fi board. Now you'll notice there's two versions. Now the official Wi-Fi board has a SD card add-on that Just Call Me Coco made, or you can actually make one yourself. Um, just a little bit of wiring, but mine does not have an onboard SD card. So you're just gonna select Flipper dev board and we'll select version. So, I mean, it's either latest or previous. We're gonna go with latest because obviously we're cool. And then now, yeah, you can flash either Marauder or Black Magic. Marauder is the Wi-Fi suite of tools. Black Magic is the wireless debugging. So we're gonna use Marauder and then just hit program. 
give it a roll, and it finishes in no time. It's so much faster than it used to be. Such a cool process. Great job on this project. Great job. And we're complete. All you got to do is unplug the board, and it's ready to go. And that's it. That's the workflow for installing the firmware onto the dev board and onto your flipper itself. Easy peasy if you want to stay on official firmware. Now, if you want to be a little more spicy, uh, we can go ahead and install custom firmware. The guys over at XFW did a fantastic job making this entire process even easier on their firmware. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we have FC flasher closed, labs closed, everything closed. Take our flipper. And we're going to go ahead and plug it into USB-C. We'll hop down to the desktop and install XFW. All right, so we're just gonna navigate over to the Extreme website, which is flipper-extre.me, Extreme, and click on Upload. Upload, click on Install. Wow, reading's hard all of a sudden. Cool, 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 and just click the flash button and give it a second, that's all you gotta do, and you'll have Extreme installed. We'll be right back. One short rest later, and it's all set. You can't really see anything on the screen here, but it's all done. So let's close this, and we'll actually open QFlipper so you can see what's on my screen. You don't need to do this. This is just me showing you my Flipper screen. Uh, otherwise, it's just me talking about what I'm doing, and that's really boring. So here we are. We've got Extreme updated. So now we're running Extreme firmware. What we'll do from here is actually take our Wi-Fi board and plug it into the flipper per usual. You don't need to do anything special. Just go ahead, plug the Wi-Fi board into the flipper and we're good to go. So we're going to navigate into apps and then we're going to go to GPIO and then we're going to go down to ESP Flasher. There we go. All right. Now the fun part. It's this easy. Click on quick flash. And then we're going to go to the Flipper Wi-Fi board. You can see they've added functionality for all these other boards. So depending upon what other board you're running, you can use, you know, whatever they're using. And actually for clarity, the ESP32 Room is a completely different chipset than the ESP32 Rover that's running on the official board. Now, a lot of people like Just Call Me Coco or AWOC use an ESP32 Room. All you have to do is select that and, you know, that's what you're using. If you don't know what board you're using if you look really closely at the actual chip on the wi-fi board itself it will tell you it'll say esp32 room or esp32 rover so once we've got our board selected we'll just press the middle button so again we don't want to flash black magic we want to use marauder we'll click that and it's going to automatically enter bootloader mode you don't need to press any buttons and then it's just going to automatically install the proper firmware onto your wi-fi board now it's very important to note that the guys at xfw do things a little bit differently and they will occasionally tweak both the companion app and the firmware that goes onto the wi-fi board so you want to make sure that you update the wi-fi board every time there's a major release in firmware very important to that same degree. Also, don't overwrite the Marauder companion app that's already in XFW. Their version is the correct one, so there's no reason to install anything else. Other fun tidbit is if we scroll up on here, we'll notice an error that people tend to get freaked out about. If we go all the way up here, do 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 do, it scrolls down. So, you know, when you're installing it, you'll see all this. But if we go all the way up, there we go, oh, went too far. Here we go, back down, do do do. Failed to mount SD card, SD card not supported. That is okay. That is not a problem at all. All that really means is that the, the board that we have currently does not have an SD card attached to it, which it does not. So we're done. Yeah, we can back out of the app and now we have everything we need to run ESP32 Marauder and that's really freaking cool. So now we can get into the business of figuring out how to crack some Wi-Fi passwords. So we can exit out of here, and now we're gonna go down to Wi-Fi. This used to be in GPIO, but they moved it to Wi-Fi, and we're gonna go to ESP32 Wi-Fi Marauder. Now, for those of you that are new to this app, I have an entire video basically explaining how to use this app. There's been a lot of updates, so I may have to make an update for that video, but you know, there's a lot more features on here and I show you how to use most of them in my previous video on how to use it. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you're in the Marauder app is scroll all the way down to the bottom here. Super, super, super important. And we're gonna go to save to Flipper SD card and then go to yes. And that's gonna make sure all the PCAP files are saved directly to the SD card that's plugged into the Flipper. You can save the logs there too if you want. I don't really care about logs, so we'll select no for that. Very important. 
All right, so from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go to scan access points. That's what AP stands for. And we're going to scan our nearby access points. Give it a little while, but keep an eye on the screen. It will show you what access points it's finding. And there we go, squash net. That's what we want. So I can just click the back button and we're done scanning. So now what the app is actually going to do is it assigns a number to every access point. So here's all the access points we found. And now we have, we keep scrolling down. Do, 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 do. Here we go, Squatch Net is number eight. So perfect, now we know Squatch Net number eight. From there we simply click back, and then we're gonna go to select the access point, and then we'll simply click on the number eight, and then save, then press back a couple times, then you're all set. And then you're done setting the Wi-Fi access point. So now we gotta do some sniffing. So if we go down to sniff, do, do, sniff, here we go. Press the side arrow to go to PM Kit, also known as PIM Kids, also known as Pairwise Master Key Identifiers. Go ahead and select there, and we're gonna go with Active. So there's a different, you know, a bunch of different attacks we can do, and I can kind of explain them quickly for you. So we can do a passive sniff, which is really just gonna sniff for everything, and it's gonna see if any handshakes happen to come our way, we'll catch them. We can go with Active, and what that will do is we'll target the Wi-Fi access point that we currently selected, and it will do a de-authentication attack against that access point. What a de-authentication attack does is it basically simply asks the devices on that network to disconnect from it. Keep in mind, this only works on 2.4 gigahertz networks. Basically, this entire process really only works on 2.4 gigahertz networks. We can also do a targeted passive list or a targeted active list. Basically, it's the same idea, but you have you know multiple different access points that you're attacking at the same time. So for today, what we're gonna do is the active force deauth. We'll select that right there and it's running. What's really cool about this is that it actually will show you when you're getting the EAPOL data. Now what EAPOL stands for is Extensible Authentication Protocol over LAN. Basically, these are our four-way handshakes that we need in order to decrypt the password. I always say give this, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it takes if you're lucky. And yeah, we should be able to get the information that we need. All right, sometime later, I have a bunch of these EA Pauls, and those are going to be the files that we need. So we're good to go. We'll back out of this right to the beginning screen. So yeah, from here, we can just pull the files off of our flipper and yeah, we're ready to go. So yeah, we can simply go back and we'll hop into the file manager. Yeah, so from here, all you got to do is open the SD card, go to apps data, go to Marauder, go to PCAPs, and here is my glorious PCAP. Go ahead and, uh, whoops, download. Put this guy right on my desktop, and here is our Sniff Pim Kids. Oh, it's so good. Here's our PCAPs. And then we can even right click on that, go to properties, and then, hey, look, it's got a file size. Look at that. Now, if for any reason you get a PCAP file with a zero byte file size, go ahead and update and install both the new firmware for your flipper and the new companion app and the new firmware for the Wi Fi board. Make sure you're starting off fresh. So start from step one and get back here. So I guess now is a really good time to talk about what a PCAP actually is. So PCAPs, basically it's just a digest of the password that cannot be directly converted into a password. As my good friend Delilah puts it, it's like trying to turn a chicken McNugget back into a chicken. You just can't do it. What you can do is take millions of passwords and basically re-digest each of those using the same algorithm to see if they match in the end. So this is why, yeah, these are dictionary attacks, but there's not really too many better ways of doing this, at least using this method. Now there's a couple ways we can go ahead and deal with these PCAPs and get information from them. So let's close QFlipper and let's check out a really cool project that InfoSec Red set up. So this is InfoSec Red's PCAP uploader. Really cool. All you gotta do is basically put the PCAPs in the same folder as this and run in a command and basically it's going to upload those pcap and then email you with the cracked password which is really cool so all you do is go to download zip we'll download this to our desktop just like we have millions of times before and then we'll just extract all of this here we go extract and then boop -ba -doo boo here's our folder which has the pcap uploader very very cool what's really fun too is if you're the kind of person that takes the sd card out to transfer files you can even put this upload windows command into the same folder as the pcaps and it will automatically do this all in one step super fun so the way it works is we'll just copy and paste our pcap in here and then just run upload dash win command obviously windows is going to tell us that we don't want to do that click more info click run anyway 
But yeah, here it is. So all you got to do is enter your email address, the at talking sasquatch.com. There we go. And it's going to, yeah, we're done. It's already sent this off to onlinehashcrack.com. We're going to get a confirmation email about it. And as soon as it's done cracking it, it's going to go directly to our email. One step, super cool. Literally couldn't be easier. You can do this anywhere. What's great about this too, is it doesn't require you to have a super powerful GPU. If you're trying to find the easiest possible way, this is a great way, but let's say we want to do it the fancier way or the old fashioned way. So let's delete all this stuff and let's start in a different direction. And the old fashioned way that we're going to use today is going to be simply using Hashcat. So we're in Windows, we're going to download the binaries, boopity boppity, save here. It's going to go directly onto our desktop. I guess I got to actually click the button, close this, uh, wait for it to download. Here we go. And then we're going to open this. I use 7-zip, which works really well for opening 7-zip files or any file like that. Drag and drop, put this onto our desktop. Give it just a second. Close that. We'll delete the original file because we don't need that. Open up this folder. And now for the next step. Now, again, since I said we can't turn a chicken nugget back into a chicken, we do need a word list to basically test against our password. So here we go. We've got all of these different word lists. The link will be down below. We're going to use rockyou.text.gz. Go ahead and click that. And if you click the raw button right here, that basically is going to allow you to download it. We'll put that directly into our Hashcat folder. Do not unzip this. Leave it as a gun zip. Leave it as a compressed file. You do not need to unzip this. It's not going to make your life any better. All right. So now what we have to do is actually convert our PCAP file into something that Hashcat can use. So we're going to use Hashcat.net slash cap to Hashcat. Same thing we did last time. We're just going to open up our PCAPs and then click the convert tool. Handshake extraction successful. Now keep in mind this can fail. That's a bummer. You know, it's just kind of how it happens sometimes. We'll have to kind of start over again. But for now, we'll click download. And again, we're going to save it directly into our Hashcat folder. And let's make this easier. We're just going to name this pcap.hc22000. That's hc22000. Fantastic. We can close this. And now we can do the fun part. So let's confirm real quick that we are in our Hashcat folder. We have rockyou.txt.gz, we have pcap.hc22000, and we have our hashcat.exe. Perfect. So now we're going to do a fun little trick. If you go into the address bar and type CMD, that's going to open up the command prompt so we can do this the fun way. So we're simply going to type in hashcat. It's going to run the hashcat program. We're going to do the name of the pcap file, which is pcap.hc22000, and then just the word list, which is rockyou dot txt whoop txt dot gz and let it rip there we go when we cracked it now one thing to keep in mind is that uh, this does run off of the gpu and i do have an rtx 3080 so i have a very powerful gpu so it takes a lot less time than maybe it would if you're on a laptop or something but it will work eventually but yeah if we take a look right now it's squatchnet and there's our password right there very very cool we've successfully cracked our wi-fi password and i mean it's just that easy well it's not actually that easy there's a lot of steps and a lot of things that can go wrong along the way in no way is this guaranteed to work on every single network also again as i said before make sure if you're trying to test a network it's got to be a 2.4 gigahertz network otherwise it's just not going to work now what is helpful is that most of the 5g networks or most of the home networks or most of the networks in general are a mesh network and it does use a 2.4 g basically part of the network and that's more or less for IoT things or Internet of Things. There's so many different devices like smart switches, lights, all sorts of stuff that use a 2.4 gigahertz network because the 2.4 gigahertz signal reaches much, much further than 5G. Oh, yeah. And while I'm thinking about it, let me show you what it looks like from Red's PCAP uploader. They just sent me an email. It's not done yet, but I can get to the, the control panel. We can take a look. So let's hop onto the desktop. All right. Yeah, here is basically the um, online hashcrack.com it shows that it found the network right there what kind of password encryption it is and yeah it'll basically go through and crack this password for me it says it can take up to 72 hours depending upon the complexity of the password and i guess the user how many people are using it at the time but again this is a really good way to do this and it's super super easy for anybody who you know, again doesn't have the gpu or maybe they're trying to do things quickly 
it's a great tool. So yeah, I hope that was as uncomplicated as I can possibly make it. Again, cracking Wi-Fi passwords is a tricky thing to do, and it is based off of word lists. Now you can add rules to the word list, which will effectively kind of change the way the words and things that it's you know trying to crack against. There's a lot, a lot of stuff here. There's a reason why there's entire cybersecurity like divisions just for password cracking. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a longer video. There is a ton of stuff to go over. And again, it's complicated. And I want to try to make it as clear and simple as possible for you. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.